All right, this week's video, welcome to my new office. Let's go around, let's talk to some of the key guys here and see what's going on. All right, so the huge update that's now happened is that now we've got the shop cleaned out, we got the offices set up, people are here, they're settled, we can finally resume production again, which means that I'll introduce you back again to Keaton, our chief technology officer. He's gonna run over what we're doing back for production on high voltage side. Hey guys, so while the shop's been getting set up, we've been doing some initial tests on our PDU. So this was about two months of design work to get this bad boy and then six months of production, I believe. Uh, so we've just been doing some initial uh, functionality tests, you know, super exciting stuff, getting contacts to flip, things like that. Super excited that it's working. We've been doing all of that with a very cool device. It's a high voltage, low power power supply. It plugs off the wall so we can get some nice spicy wires going without having to get our high voltage batteries up. Next steps is now that we have a production team back in action, installing batteries on the chassis, putting the cab on the chassis and putting PDU in the cab, as well as getting all of our actual systems stop, start working together instead of independently. So a lot of dominoes have been set up and now it's time to knock them all down. Yeah, two months of absolute chaos, absolute stress for everyone, removing, getting everything set up, but we're set up, Keaton and his team is on it. They're now back at work uh, testing and installing. Yeah, no more sleeping in a tent for the chief technology officer. You'll still sleep in a tent. Yeah, I, I will. I love my tent. <laughs> awesome. All right, I'm here with Jacob for the mechanical engineering side of things. Where are we at on that? So very exciting news. We've completed the design and ordering process for the two semi-trucks that we are currently building. So as mechanical engineers, we are now complete that process and the parts are showing up. So we, now we can start the design and ordering process for the next generation of hybrid trucks and the, me the mechanical trucks. Very exciting. Yeah, so we're, we're finished all the design and engineering work on this truck, mostly the odd little minor thing, but now we're moving on to designing the next one so that we can get those parts ordered. So as soon as these trucks are done, we've already got the next trucks lined up, ready to go so that people aren't waiting around. Absolutely. All right, Peter here is gonna show us some more of the parts we designed and had fabricated up. Yeah, so we have some of the cab mounts here, front and rear. We have fender mounts over here. They're definitely very beefy, so I might say a bit too beefy, but that's all part of the engineering process is iterating, and I think this is a pretty good starting point. That's not gonna break, though. No. You buy no. one cab mount, that'll last yeah, you. Yeah, it's, it's gonna outlast me, I hope. But uh, yeah, obviously we have the cab here. Right now I'm actually 3D printing some jigs to line up the holes on the chassis for the cab mounts with the holes that were originally cut when we ordered the frame rails because all this wasn't designed yet. Um, so making sure everything's gonna be nice and accurate on both sides of the chassis. Um, so that's what I'm gonna be working on over the next few days is drilling some holes, getting it all lined up and getting it all installed. So I'm really excited to see how it turns out looking on the truck, um, but it's exciting that it's all here and we're ready to start assembly. Yeah, it's nice. We get to use a local company out of Alberta now to do all the fabricating. Check that out. That is a beefy cab mount. Great work. Very beefy, Very beefy but yeah, it's pretty cool. All right, Eric is too busy to talk right now. He's in another meeting, but he's been super busy on all of the things that a CEO does, financial statements, audited reports, talking with all of, basically the administrative stuff of the business, keeps him super busy, keeps him in meetings all day. Glad I don't have to do that. All right, this is Rob, our concrete guy. What we got behind us is what, a third of the uh, rebar already? Yeah, this is a third. We were able to uh, prefab it all underneath this nice big building here. Stay out of the sun, stay out of the heat, and uh, keep some stamina going. And we're using the big building? We are using the big building. Let's go take a look at that quick. All right, behind me is the concrete form. This is what we're gonna be putting the concrete into to build the big shop. Rob's been pre-making it, and he's been saving us a ton of money by harvesting some local materials here. So yeah, as you can see behind me, we've been basically harvesting from all of these old infill buildings from the old mill site here. And so we've been able to supply with lots of a two by six and lots of uh, five eighths plywood, but uh, there's a lot of nail pulling involved and yeah, hey, it is what it is. It's already here. The building's got to come down. So if we can uh, 
start taking the plywood off the walls and use the plywood for pouring the concrete into. That saves us an absolute ton. That's how we're getting this shop built for our uh, one and a half, two million dollar budget we got to build it. Yeah, these are just um, prefab sections, just in case we do get some last minute changes of engineering so that I can change these up fairly easily. This is just a first one kind of mock up so you can see the size and uh, scope of what we're up against. Okay, so we're building all these concrete forms for the big shop we're building. And one of the cool things is Rob is saving us a ton of money. He's using the old plywood that came from the buildings in this shop behind us. Basically pulling down the old plywood, whatever old boards he can find, pre-building this. This is saving us a ton of money by using something that most people just throw out. And uh, nice thing is we're repurposing people's graffiti. We have the most artistic, colorful concrete forms, I think, in Western Canada. I would agree. All right, we're here with Spencer. Right now he's working on his Ritchie Brothers rock truck, uh, but let's go have a look at the test track we're doing with Damon. So Spencer, what are we out here doing? Today we're out here stripping. Yeah, topsoil. Topsoil. Yeah, topsoil. We're about three quarters done the test track stripping. It's a two kilometer circle and the one kilometer straight. So a couple of things that have delayed us and been challenging are just the, the history of the land. There's a lot of backfill and stuff like that that we've been dealing with. Lots of sawdust from having the mill here for so long, but we got a lot of the bulk of it done. So a couple more days and we should have it stripped. So why, what we're doing on this test track is that we need it from CMVSS requirements. Randy was out here this morning and yesterday me and Spencer went and took a drive. Randy is our CMVSS consultant. Uh, but there's certain tests you got to do brandishing, burnishing for the brakes. You got to do braking challenges. You got to do cornering challenges, ABS control events. All of these things will be accomplished here. Without doing this, we cannot get our CMVSS certification, which means we cannot get it and sell a road legal truck. So a lot of people are saying, why don't you just build the trucks before you build the test track? Because if we don't build the test tracks and we don't accomplish and meet our check marks of the things that we have to under Canadian motor vehicle safety standards or US motor vehicle, federal motor vehicle safety standards, we will not be able to sell the trucks or register them. So we have to have this test track completed at the same time the first trucks are completed so we can get them out here testing, get our sign off from our officials, then we get our VIN numbers, then we can hand the trucks over to the customers. But this is crucial to being able to sell trucks. Okay, one of the questions we got is why don't you use somebody else's test track? Why are you building your own? Because nobody would let us use their test track. Number one, there's almost none in Western Canada. And the ones that we could ship our truck to said, you're not allowed to run our trucks here. Our trucks are heavy. They're 160,000 pounds when they're fully loaded and we need to test it that weight. And if you phone anybody, hey, can I put a 160,000 pound vehicle on your racetrack? They say no. So what do we do? We build our own, adapt and overcome. Okay, to start with on the cabins here, they're all in various stages, but they're all here. So for this one, we're just putting in the floor right now. After that, we'll run our electrical in the walls, get insulation, vapor barrier up. Uh, I'll show you what a further along cabin looks like. This cabin that I'm gonna show you right now is a little farther along. We like to call it at what we call stage two. But this one, we've got all the electrical ran in the walls. And what we got here is toilet, shower. Believe it or not, we have it working. Toilet does flush. We have water, so that's a nice luxury. What's the bucket for? Okay, once you fill the toilet, Water isn't hooked up, that's next week's goal. You just gotta take this, you fill the back. Like so, then you can have another flush. You know what, it's a little crude, but before we were all using just the truck shop toilet, so this is a huge upgrade already. I feel pretty good about that for sure. All right, this cabin is basically at stage three. This is my dad's cabin. He works a little bit faster than we do. He's got a little bit more experience than us but he's just putting in his flooring right now. He's got the underlay, the really nice stuff. Uh, in here, he's got it to the point where he's got the drywall up in his washroom, his shower, kind of everything ready to go. Shower's not installed yet, but that's next on the list, but he's got actual electrical plugs. And if you come into here, this is what it kind of looks like as a more finished product. He's got the tongue and groove up on the wall here. So this tongue and groove was done by Travis here locally as well as the two by four studs that you see here. So a lot of these two by fours were all milled uh, locally. The tongue and groove was using local lumber. So we're, we're really using the resources we have here to build these in our evenings after work and on weekends. And 
it's taking a little bit longer than we expected, but it is going pretty well. And these are turning out to be pretty nice cabins. Okay, behind me here is the septic field. We got the first septic fields done for the first row of cabins. We got our water line coming out and you can see it ends right there. Uh, within the next week or two, we got to actually dig the rest of the trenches, connect the water line, then we don't need to use those buckets. But septic field is right there. It comes down into here. We'll do a video on installing the septic field a little bit later, but for now, we've got it. We can actually use the washroom. So as you can see, we had some awesome updates. We have basically embraced the theory of chaos over the last two months. It was hectic, it was stressful, but we got an amazing amount of work done with that shop. We now have it finally back into production. Everyone is doing their jobs again instead of worrying about the move. That is a huge success in a very tight time frame. But this weekend, we are now getting ready because tomorrow is investor day. People are gonna be showing up. It's our annual event. And stay tuned for next week because next week's video is the high school go-kart challenge. We did that last weekend. We edited up the video this week. I cannot wait to see these kids did amazingly. Make sure you subscribe. You are not gonna wanna miss that.